Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics. And today's video is going to be another pro tip for your mental toolbox. Uh, the topic is run out and circularity, more specifically uh, checking those using V blocks. Uh, so while V blocks are a great tool to use during many various types of manual inspections, we're not saying you shouldn't be using them, but there's a, there's a unique pitfall to using V blocks. And we want to point that out here in this video so everybody's well aware. All right, so let's take a look at this example right here. We have a simple cylinder with two bosses on either side. Uh, we have a large diameter of 1.500 plus or minus 15 thousandths. And as we all know, rule number one would actually control the circularity error of this cylinder based on this size dimension to 30 thousandths of circularity or cylindricity. However, we've refined that down to 10 thousandths. So we're controlling the outside diameter, this large outside diameter, to a circularity of 10 thousandths. Now what that means theoretically is from the central axis of this outside diameter here, what's the radial difference from the highest point to the lowest point? What's the radial difference between these two points? That's the difference between these two values right here. As long as that radial distance is less than 10 thousandths, we've met our circularity spec. Now if it's more than that, obviously we have failed our circularity spec. So how do we inspect that? Now a lot of people will put this part this cylinder, the surface of that cylinder, inside a V-block and then rotate it and record the radial deviations on an indicator. So here in this instance, the goal of the V-block is to allow rotational freedom while allowing for the inspection of the high points with respect to the low points. In other words, the radial deviations of the cylindrical feature about its axis. Now that's where things kind of fall apart. Ideally, it's about the axis of the feature. So the radial deviations that you're gonna get when you slap an indicator on here, or you have the full indicated movement or the total indicator reading is going to be that radial deviation with respect to that axis. However, as we mentioned, there's a very unique pitfall to circularity. Uh, and that pitfall is the uh, geometry of our V block and the geometry of the surface we're going to inspect interact with each other in very different ways that does not necessarily give us an axis of rotation. So let's take a look at what that means here. We have these two examples side by side. Uh, the left one is what happens in the real world. And the right one is what happens if you theoretically are able to create a single axis of rotation about this outside diameter. What do I mean by that? If you look at this one specifically right here, you'll notice that if the high points of that tri-lobed uh, cylinder, you'll notice there's some tri-lobing air going on here, which is a very real air that happens to a lot of cylinders. Um, the high point of that, that tri-lobing can settle down inside this V-block. And what happens when it settles down there is the axis of our feature actually drops a little bit. Uh, the whole part drops kind of into this V-block. And now this is a pretty comically um, large amount of air, don't get me wrong, but nonetheless, it does happen on your parts depending on how tight your tolerances are. This is something you might need to worry about. Uh, so the part does drop down in the V-blocks. However, if we're going to measure circularity, we can't move that axis of rotation with respect to our indicator, right? That axis needs to be fixed with respect to our indicator. So you'll notice the axis here theoretically shouldn't move. Uh, and this is a lot of times what polar probes will do. Uh, there's a lot of fancy equipment out there, um, digital equipment that will read the circularity uh, to a high level of accuracy. Um, but oftentimes we have to rely on V-blocks in a quick uh, pinch or uh, just as a quick sanity check. And these are the kind of pitfalls you need to be aware of when you are doing those sanity checks. You'll notice that the indicated value in the real world is about twice as much as the theoretical actual amount of air that's happening. Now you might say to yourself, that's good, that's conservative, at least as long as I know if the value I'm getting off my uh, indicator when it's in a V block is, is going to be overkill or conservative let's say it was 10 thousandths indicated here, well, I know I'm at least probably let, you know half of that. So I, I definitely pass my tolerance. Um, what you need to be careful of though, if, if you assume that, it's not always less than, right? And so if we look at uh, something like a quad lobed part. So first we had the tri-lobe, now we have quad lobed. So we have four high points going on here. Again, another common error, not as common as tri-lobing, but another common error that can happen to a cylindrical feature on a lathe. Um, you'll still have high points. When those high points settle into the V-block in this scenario, you'll notice that it's actually flip-flopped now. The indicated value that we're going to get during the actual setup when it drops in and settles into that V-block is going to be relatively small to the actual amount of air. 
So in this scenario, you might find that you have a good indicated part when in all reality, the actual amount of air that's occurring on that, if you were to fix it on its own axis, is much more, more than twice as much. So be, again, be very, very careful when you're measuring things with V-blocks. Uh, they're a very handy tool. We're not telling you not to use them. They're very common to be used all the time. Just know the pitfalls of every tool that you pick up and use. So if you are using V-blocks as your metrology equipment go-to in order to measure runout or circularity or anything that creates an axis of rotation, uh, you should be very aware of these pitfalls. And if it's a very tight tolerance and you're flirting with the line of a good part or a bad part, I would highly recommend some sort of digital equipment that can negate the effects of settling into this V-block, such as a polar probe or a runout checker. Um, again, this problem does exist on runout, we're showing you circularity here, but runout is no different. If we were to set this part on these two smaller ODs because they were the datum, they could also themselves have their own tri-lobing that would then affect the runout of the larger diameter. So again, be very careful when we're considering V-blocks. If your tolerances are very tight, use a runout checker, uh, use a polar probe. Otherwise, these are good sanity checks. Um, just be sure to know what can happen when you're using V-blocks. So hopefully you pick something up here. And once again, thanks for joining us. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.